Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be reviewing pedigree charts and taking a look at how pedigree charts can be used to follow a trait through a family. So, first thing in order to follow a trait through a family, you have to understand two big ideas. Um, so first it has to do with um, autosomes versus sex chromosomes. So if we take a look here, um, red. the first, and this is human chromosomes, the first 44 autosomes I mean, the first 44 chromosomes are autosomes. So all of these here are chromosomes that are referred to as autosomes. Okay. The last two, so that's 44, so there's 44 of these, 44 autosomes, if we're talking about humans. The last two chromosomes are sex chromosomes. So these are sex chromosomes at the end. This is a girl because there's two X's. If it was a boy, there'd be an X and a Y. Um, but the last two are always sex chromosomes. Now, why are they named like this? Um, the sex chromosomes contain genes in them that determine if you're a boy or a girl among other things. There's other genes in there as well. For example, there's genes in there that make proteins that allow you to see certain colors. There's genes in there that allow you to make proteins to cause blood clots so you don't bleed to death. Um, so aside from just having genes that determine if you're a boy or a girl, there's other instructions in there as well. Now, we call them sex chromosome because of that. They do have instructions that help turn you into a boy or a girl. The rest, all these up here, the autosomes do not have instructions that turn you into a boy or girl. They have instructions for making other proteins that do other things and make other traits for you. So it basically, if it's not a sex chromosome, it's automatically referred to as an autosome. So here, the first 44 of the autosomes, we have the two sex chromosomes, 44 plus two adds up to 46. When we're talking about following traits in a pedigree chart, there are autosomal dominant, traits to follow, and then there's autosomal recessive traits to follow. So if it's dominant, um, we're going to see a certain pattern as we follow it through the pedigree chart. If it's recessive, we'll see a different pattern. Sex chromosomes, there can be traits that we can follow through sex chromosomes, and we usually um, are going to follow X-linked disorders. Um, so you'll see X-linked disorders. And we can follow X-linked disorders through a family. Um, so as we go through and we look at these different pedigree charts, I'm going to show you an example of each of these, an autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, and X-linked, and see how we can figure out what each person in the family actually carries as far as the different traits that we're looking at. Now we're actually going to focus more, I mean you could do it for widow's peak, you can do it for PTC tasting, you know, stuff like that, um, but we're going to focus on the disorders in this case. So we're going to look at autosomal dominant disorders, autosomal recessive disorders, and that just means that they're on the autosomes, disorders that can be found here, and then we'll look at X-linked disorders, which would be disorders we can find here. So. First thing to do when you're looking at a pedigree chart is determine if it's autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, or if it is X-linked. Okay? Now, the key thing right off the bat is if it's X-linked, you're going to see that almost only the boys show it. It's, it's more rare for a female to show an X-linked disorder, so if this was a pedigree chart that was showing an X-linked disorder, you would see only pretty much the males filled in. You wouldn't see any females. So that right off the bat tells us that this, this is not X-linked, um, so it's going to be either autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. So to figure this out, you choose someone who's shaded in, and then you look at their parents. Don't look at the parents to the offspring. You always find someone who's shaded in and look at their parents. And you go here or there. If one or both of their parents is shaded in, this is probably an autosomal dom dominant disorder that we're following. Then we look here. Here's someone shaded in. Here's his parents. So you look here. One or both parents, probably dominant. Look here, one or both parents, probably dominant. Now this is the general rule. This could actually be recessive, um, but in, it, it's more likely that this is actually autosomal dominant. Okay? So we can decide here now that this is autosomal dominant. And once again, you just use that trick. Find someone shaded in, look at the parents. If one or both parents are shaded in, it's autosomal dominant. Now, make sure you look at every child to parent comparison, and you'll see why in the next uh, example. So this is autosomal dominant, 
And the next thing we want to determine is what alleles, what genotypes do these people have? And we can use a pedigree chart to do that. Now, since this is autosomal dominant, I'm going to use Huntington's disease. because it is an autosom autosomal dominant disorder. Okay. So since it's dominant, that means the people who are shaded in, they have Huntington's disease. And because it's dominant, that means in order to have it, they have to have at least one dominant allele. So we'll say big H equals Huntington's PhD disease, and little h equals normal. So. Everybody who's shaded in has at least one capital letter. So I'm going to put for this guy here, he's got a, a big H, he's got a big H, she's got a big H, she's got a big H, big H, and big H. That's the only way they can have Huntington's disease, if they have one dominant allele for Huntington's disease. Now everybody not shaded in, they do not have Huntington's disease. There's only one way to have that. And that's if you don't have any dominant letter, you just have recessive. So little h, little h. That's the only way. Otherwise, if they had one big H, they would be shaded in too. So here, little h, little h. I'm going to put him up here. So big H, I didn't think it would fit. Uh, little h, little h, little h, little h, little h, little h, and little h, little h. Now, when you went through and you gave everybody shaded in the one dominant allele, you only give them one. You never give anybody two dominant alleles, ever, ever, ever. Whether you're doing autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive, doesn't matter. You only give them one dominant allele. Then you have to figure out the rest based on the rest of the people in the chart. So I'm going to start here on this side. Um, let's see if we look at this daughter. Here's her parents. She has a little h and a little h. These alleles had to come from mom and dad. One has to come from mom, one has to come from dad. So we know that one of these H's came from mom, one of these H's had to come from dad. Now this daughter here, she's what I call an either or. She has one big H, but can you tell who she got the big H from? No. In that case, she's going to be an either or. She might be big H, big H, because she can get a big H from mom and a big H from dad, or she might be big H, little h. So she's an either or. Now you shouldn't find a lot of those on a pedigree chart. Um, most people you should be able to fill in. So let's go ahead and take a look at this here. So we don't know what he has for his second letter, but if we look at his wife and his daughter here, you see the daughter has two little h's. We know one of these for sure came from mom. She cannot get both from mom. That means the other one had to come from dad. So he has to be big h, little h. Go over to this side here. Um, if we look at this son and this daughter, they both have two little H's. We know that the dad must have given one of them. The other little H has to come from mom. And then we look at this son here. If you think about it, where did he get his big H from? From mom. So that means dad can only give a little H. And there you go. We filled in for autosomal dominant. So the big ideas here that you want to follow is first, you look for the pattern, choose someone shaded in, look at the parents. If one or both parents are shaded in, it's probably dominant, but check all parents uh, and offspring. And then you give everybody who is shaded in one dominant allele, never both, just one dominant allele. And then everybody not shaded in gets two recessive alleles. And then you go through and you find the pattern and you see who has what. All right, the next example here is, um, Another pedigree here, and we're going to see if it's autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. So you pick someone shaded in, one parent has it, it's probably going to be autosomal dominant. You go over here, one person has it, but neither parent does. Automatically, even though there was one person where it seems to be an autosomal dominant pattern, because this person and neither of the parents has it, that means automatically this is autosomal recessive. So this is autosomal recessive. And then if you look here, this daughter has it, but neither parent, automatically autosomal recessive. So if you're ever looking at a pedigree chart, and anywhere on the chart you find a person shaded in, but neither parent, it's automatically autosomal recessive. Now in this case we'll use uh, an autosomal recessive disorder called albinism. And in albinism, um, we'll go, uh, big A is normal, 
and little a will be albinism, albino. Oops. Okay. So here, everybody shaded in has albinism because um, it's autosomal recessive. So we give everybody shaded in, we give a little a, little a, because that's the only way for them to have albinism is if they have two recessive albino alleles. Everybody not shaded in, they're normal. So we go through and we give them a capital A. Never both. So we give them one dominant allele and that's it. Then we'll figure out the rest after we fill everybody in like this. Never ever give a person two dominant alleles to start. Alright, now we go through and we look for patterns. So we look at this part of the family here. She has a dominant allele. We look at her parents. Here's her mom, here's her dad. She must have gotten it from her mom because her dad doesn't have one. So the big A came from mom. What can dad give her? Only a little A. We look at this mom and we try to figure it out. We could look at her parents or we could look at her children here. And we say, okay, she has a big A, but she has a daughter that has two little A's. One of these must have come from dad. The other one must have come from mom. We go to this family here. So this man and woman had this daughter, this daughter, and this son. This daughter has two little letters. One had to come from dad, one had to come from mom. We go to this part here, and we look and we see, okay, these three children came from this man, this woman. They all have one dominant allele that only could have come from dad because mom doesn't have one. So that means mom can only give a little recessive allele. We look at the dad. We don't have enough information about the dad, so he can be an either or. He might be big A, big A, or he can be big A, little a. And finally, this part here, um, we look here. This man and this woman had this daughter. One of these recessive alleles had to come from dad. One had to come from mom. And finally, this daughter here, she has a big A. We don't know who she got him from, so she can be big A, big A, or she can be big A, little a.